Mm, mm, mm. Didn't I tell y'all that it pays to not be loyal to disloyal people? Well, Takashi is a prime example of that. I told y'all we in a whole different generation, whole different era, honey. And y'all people, y'all was like, Brit, no, it's not gonna happen. Takashi, he gotta pay the price. All of that. It do not pay in 2019 to be with, especially with the type of rules, regulations, laws, and all that to be loyal to disloyal people, honey. You had Mel, aka who loves the phone, you know, uh, talking about how people need to be super violated and stuff like that. And I just was watching a documentary. Well, not a documentary. Well, Sammy Gravano, aka Sammy the Bull, did an interview. And basically, he said it. Like, these dudes be wanting you to be loyal. Meanwhile, in you know, in between time, if you in the lockup or you, like, away, they'll mess with your girl. They'll steal your money, all kind of stuff. So, it just don't pay. Like, I don't understand. This is somebody that is, like, a, a G for real saying that <laughs> he was, like, he, he spoke to John. Right? He was like, so you want me to take all of these years as if I did everything by myself and, I, you know, you outside, you the boss. And, you know, basically John was like, he the boss. He had to keep stuff going. But you just supposed to, you know, be left up the river without a paddle. And you know that you wasn't responsible for all of this. But that's what people want you to do. You see, like, all of these... um. OG rappers like Snoop and stuff trying to talk about this rat type of stuff, honey, and snitch type of stuff. Sakashi done, uh, done made it all the way up to that bank, boo. He now has a Showtime special. We're going to talk about it right now. So he done did what he needed to do. <laughs> why should I, why should I, <laughs> you know, give my time to disloyal people that was plotting on, and on me and all of that other stuff? Like people got the game twisted. So it says new Takashi 69 docu series, and that is what Super Villain announced. The three part Showtime series will be based on a 2019 Rolling Stone feature. So didn't I tell y'all? I said, yo, this dude, he gonna get out. People still gonna people gonna want to listen to his music now more than ever, due to the fact that he was in, you know, like a a Rico situation, and he lived to tell the tale. He got out to tell the tale, you know, shows, specials, and all of that. Dude is winning. I don't, you know, I mean, if you, in the world's way of winning, he would be winning. But a lot of people was like, oh, nah, he ain't never going to be able to make a comeback. Do, 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 do. It's people always they be hating every day. They should get a job, yo. Just all coming up with all these conclusions. Like, he's done. He's washed as if we are in 1980 or something where that was, like, a career counselor. Like, no. Half these dudes that people admire from the 80s and all of that, they was telling on people, too. They just don't want you to know about it. They don't want you to know they got that paperwork and all of that stuff. But the craziest thing is... They was talking trash about 6 9 you know, doing what was best for his life. And then the very person that was sneak dissing him on the phone, trying to plot on him, Mel, a.k.a. who loves the phone, a.k.a. who talked too much, he got 11 years on the books. I'm going to get into all of that. So let's just talk about the special, or the, you know, the docu-series. So Showtime has announced Supervillain, a new three-part docu-series chronicling the life in, I'm going to say creamy creme, but y'all know what I'm talking about, cream, okay, of Takashi 69, produced by Imagine Documentaries, Lightbox, and Rolling Stone. Y'all know how epic that is? You got Lightbox, Rolling Stone, and Imagine, and they, you know, want to capitalize on this situation people i think what people don't realize is that we are in a capitalist society 
don't hate the player, hate the game. Okay, just like the people who was mad at the lady that was selling them bonnets for a hundred and something dollars, she found a way to finesse for a check. Just because you didn't find a way to finesse for a check, you can't even be mad at people. Bonnet is French, by the way. So, um, pretty much, people always sitting around bitter trying to count somebody money, bitter trying to tell somebody what to do, or you know, oh, and all the while they telling you, oh, you shouldn't have, um, you shouldn't have snitched, but you in jealous of his, jealous of this young dude, yo. Jealous of this young dude because of how he came in the rap game being independent and how he took the music industry by storm. Jealous of that because they've never even touched half of the success that this dude. I mean, without even a lot of features, this dude took the rap industry by storm, okay? Without a lot of features, these dudes have to have crews, features, and all of that just to get their, you know, albums to even make a jingle, okay? Half of these folks, um... They say Jim Jones had a recent project out and it just basically probably ain't really even do all that good. Now, it's a Jim Jones make good music, but in the time we in, you know, it's a different generation. So, are, are your, is your audience still listening to your music at this time? Typically, the people from that era that was listening to your music, they're now probably parents, probably listening to other things because they've grown and it's like, if you don't grow or try to research to keep up, you know, you kind of get pushed out. And that's what's happening to a lot of these older rappers is that it's new generations of people listening to music and they like what they like. And so instead of just being like, yo, I admire how this young dude came and, you know, just, woo, you know, took the, took the music industry by storm, nah. Oh, he do, 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 and this style of music. I remember, like, people was hating on the Migos when they first came out. Now, I didn't necessarily like the Migos beginning stage music, but over time, they started making music, and I was like, okay, this, this, this is, you know, I kind of like this sound. But people was hating on them when they first started, too. So it's like a lot of people, they are overcritical of the younger up-and-coming people because they wouldn't do something a certain way or in their time, something was true in their time. But now, you know, these people, they're finding a way to be innovative. Like a lot of the youth, they're making apps, they're making using technology, they're opening up new ways to make money now that were not, you know, available in certain eras. And I, I say Soldier Boy definitely started the wave of people making music uh, music in a digital form and making money off that and capitalizing off that, as well as you seeing Takashi just straight take advantage of, you know, music today. So, I mean, don't hate the player, hate the game. People could talk about he snitched and all that. Dude still got a career. They must have believed in him enough because to give him a, a Showtime special, crazy. So, you know, all them people that was talking trash, snitch or not, honey, he is snitching all the way to the bank after this. News of the new series follows the announcement of six of uh, Snapchat 6 ix docuseries, Takashi versus the world. So, not only that, he had a Snapchat uh, documentary series. These people, honey, they looking forward to working with him and making a whole bunch of money off this whole situation. And people that was sitting up there, honey, um, talking all cray, they certainly now see where we at. See, it used to be a time where people just thought you was supposed to be loyal to disloyal people. That's for suckers. You got to protect your number one in your best interest over everybody else. It's money over bums, okay? That's the model. Money over bums. He said, why would I sit and I'm and I got my whole life ahead of me for people that clearly I know they let them listen to let him listen to them taps. And they oh, you know, Shadi just, you know, taking all his money and you know he should have worked with um Hob and Hob just would have took his money off the top and you know he need to be super violated and make sure it ain't, you know, he gotta get rid of the security. All this little hating and sneak dissing they was doing, I know they got to be sick. That he done sped off with the bag. Sick. So, 
Honey, Fat Joe said haters get tight when you worth some millions. That's why you sport the chinchilla hurt they feelings. He told y'all, Jose, jealous ones still envy. He told y'all. Now, they say 6 9 or, you know, Daniel Hernandez is currently, you know, he in the FED waiting, um, sentencing after he giving his testimonial, you know, against the members that was in that organization. Y'all know that trade and, um, you know, organization. And basically, it was part of his um, agreement with them, okay, him giving that testimonial. And basically, they say his, his sentencing date was recently moved up from January to December 18th, 2020. So he probably, once he do that, it's probably finna be a time served and he is about to be out making money. Now it's probably gonna be some salty people that's probably gonna be one to really test that um, G or mad, you know, salty that he's getting money and other people are not doing that. But you know, let's talk about Mel, AKA who loves the phone. This is the type of guy I feel that Takashi was talking about when he was on The Breakfast Club. The guy that sits on the mattress with the mattress on the floor, probably. That the best... the What I heard him saying was, you know, oh, that they just finessed a youth out of, the, out, of the, out of, you know, their money. And that was, like, the highlight, it seemed, of his life. Like, why are you your age doing this type of stupid stuff? And then to say, oh, you know, your honor... I've been around these type of people since I was 15 and, you know, please have mercy on me. Even though I know I was all the way wrong, I know that I should have been focused on my family, a job, a profession, a career, and not trying to finesse a youth out their bag and being um, a straight I would say annoyance to society, your honor. That's what, you know, he was out there hollering, you know, begging for this leniency and all of this. Oh, I was just, you know, a youth that was influenced by the wrong people. And it's like, when did you, when did you realize that you were being poorly influenced, sir? So basically, it says a judge likens um, Mel... Uh, males, y'all know that super violate type of uh, talk he was talking to um, Henry II's famous line, will someone rid me of this meddlesome, y'all know, y'all know, before imposing or giving him 11 years and three months on the books. So basically, the tap phone conversation in November 2018 between Mel or Jamel Jones and, you know, Jim Jones resulted in the FEDs taking down this whole organization. Okay, that's why a lot of people was looking at um, old Jimmy from, to the side because they like, mm, you on this tap and you didn't, you know, he getting 11 years and three um months on the books. Meanwhile, in between time, Jim is on the breakfast club. This is, this is exactly what I'm talking about, y'all. People will have you jammed up. Now, mind you, he on the phone. Jim is on the phone with Mel. And talking about, yeah, you got to make sure security because, you know, they can't carry. So, once, you know, security, you mess with security, then they, you know, they tired of working with the person because they don't want to get hurt. So, I mean, influencing this man in all the wrong ways instead of saying, yo, leave that alone, yo. It seems like they looking into that too much. Um, don't do all that that chatty patty. Don't do all that talking. You know, just stay loyal, stay down, be quiet, keep your head up, and we're going to all get past this storm. No, you got to get past, you know, he got to be super duper violated. Nah, no, you don't go on TMZ. Let Shadi handle that. Nah, 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 you got to get the security because if you get the security, you know they can't, they can't carry in New York. All this sucker hate and stuff, like he literally giving this dude instructions, yet this dude, because he's, he's a genius, of course, he's a genius, not at all. He's on the phone getting in agreement with this foolishness instead of, let me get off this line. Even Shoddy knew enough to be like, ha, ha, ha. I'm not serious about none of this. I'm going to see. I'm going to talk to you when I see you. No, not chatty patty Mel. So what you mean about the security? 
Yeah, so what we, you know, yeah, you know, he, we gotta, he gonna definitely be getting dealt with. You don't even have enough sense to know to not be on this technology in 2019 because, of course, I mean, Siri be talking to me and I don't even be talking to her. Big Speed, Cortana, whatever you got, they be, you know, they listen. Alexa, any of that, they're listening to you. So, I don't know if y'all remember that story where Alexa had gotten privy to something in somebody's house and called La Policia. So, pretty much, you would think these people would be smart enough to know to not be on, you know, telecommunications talking too freely. But this is why people, like I said, they looking at Jim to the side, like, okay, why are you free to go when you was very well on that phone? telling him or boosting him up to you know do some of this stuff so it's a lot of questions with that but I don't I don't really know and you know supposedly it was supposed to be something between him and 50 because 50 had pointed that out on social media too like you know they like he was like Jimmy say it ain't so and then next thing you know it kind of was like I don't know some you know sneak some sneak stuff on the breakfast club when it was him and the other dude from um you know his little clique or whatever but basically y'all know on the call the whole order or command was that sakashi should be super violated super duper and that is what was said in the call and that was played at the gathering darling um and y'all know that the try has like two it was two other um organization members that was there so basically they call jones the godfather of the street lineup of uh of the of the tray situation and he's not like i said jim jones is not amongst these people even though they calling him the godfather of the street lineup so basically the judge engelmeyer said Thursday that while um, Jones had not been, I guess, wrapped up in any of the, I would say, basically those type of situations where you would have to put your paws on somebody or that would involve you putting that work in. And I'm not talking about a workout or you exercising, probably running them down or running them downing on somebody um, that type of stuff. So basically, the wiretap conversation about Sakashi strongly hinted at, you know, some serious situations going on. And that's, you know, that's ultimately, I think, why they went and picked up Sakashi in the first place. Because they was like, okay, we got to get him because these people is planning or plotting on this dude. And we got to make sure he's he's good. So... The um basically the line the judge said reminded him of Henry II's favorite gripe in eleven seventy about Thomas Beckett, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Four knights interpreted Henry II's meddlesome and y'all know I guess it was a member I'm not gonna say it's 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 like a um it's a it's a serious reference, so I'm just gonna uh, bypass that. So complaint as an order if y'all know that whole story, y'all know that the four knights interpreted that as an order to go and handle Beckett. That's what it was, okay? So, basically, here's a quote from the judge. It says, you were literally telling your followers to go out and get Takashi or Hernandez. And <clears throat> it also says, it would have come as no surprise if your followers or your knights went out and handled that situation so then we you know enters him crying and begging for leniency um before you know his his time was put on the books and he said he's been swept up in this whole lifestyle since he was 15 years old he said he was recruited at a young age and his decision making wasn't the best so okay here we have this middle-aged man who is asking for leniency because he was swept up in this lifestyle, but they don't extend that same compassion or leniency to Takashi when referring to him. He's just supposed to have life all figured out in his early 20s, but yet you're begging for leniency 
um, saying, oh, I wasn't the best at decision making at my young age. You get what I'm saying? But you was ready to take him out the game. But you now, when you in front of that, that man, you all crying, begging for leniency. This is why I don't, don't I be out here playing hard and then get in front of them boys. And now you want to do all this crying and stuff. It's annoying. So he insisted he wasn't, you know, the hard choreal leader that the gov made him out to be. Jones has been, you know, they say he's been held in three, you know, FED type of situations before since the, uh, I would say the, the organization takedown and had not had any infractions for, you know, breaking any rules. So this is a quote from him. I'm quite sure if I'd want to promote, I guess, a, you know, a put, you know, a run of down situation or put the pause on somebody's situation that would have shown up behind the, uh, you know, in the inside, on the inside. But here's why I feel like that's not true. Of course, I'm going to be on my best behavior and, you know, it's a Rico situation going on. Like, of course, that you're going to be on your P's and Q's because you know that whichever way this, this situation swings is not going to be good for you. So, of course, you're going to be like a good little boy, okay, and, you know, you're going to eat all your vegetables and not, you know, try to cause any problems because you know that that would be problems for you. So to say that that's an example that you wouldn't cause any issues, like you're on the street, you're talking tough, you're hardcore, like you were sounding on, on, on those taps. And now you're trying to play slow. Like you didn't know that that's the type of time you was on. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I'm not buying it folks. And it says, but Jones is heavy duty. Y'all know his, his sales business uh, as, <laughs> I can't even say what the uh, what the judge said, but I'm gonna call it a sales business. Uh, weighed heavily in the sentence, and basically the leader, uh, basically he got caught, you know, doing sales to somebody that was undercover, and y'all know that that's not good. So that happened back in November of 2018, and it was like a $10,000 type of sales situation. So the proof showed Jones provided protection and transported large quantities of substances for this particular organization. So um, y'all know what his little rap moniker was, and he was a member of a group that was led by Jim Jones. All right, y'all, so getting to the good stuff, okay? This is why you don't be loyal to this loyal activity. For real, for real. Takashi signs new record deal worth $10 million. $10 milli, okay? So he done, he, done, he done ran off with the bag, and all of these people that was talking their trash, they wish that they could count that type of... um cash but these um og rappers they're probably really not making as much as they were making back in their day you know what i mean so he's gonna get out they're probably still gonna be pressed and saying oh you know um you know he's a he's a this he's a that but he's gonna be booked and busy and making um money so pretty much it says takashi has signed a new record deal with his old label worth a reported 10 million, okay? After giving his testimonial against, you know, the, the, the members in his former group, okay? So according to TMZ, the rapper born Daniel Hernandez signed with 10K projects for a two album deal, one in English and one in Spanish. He is now short, well, he now has to secure his, you know, his release as a part of his deal. So Hernandez was looking at a January um, sentencing, but his representatives have reportedly moved the sentencing date to the 18th of December, like I told y'all. So y'all know he was previously, I think, facing like 47 on the books before a lot of stuff. But just think about that, y'all. Him getting this $10 million deal that's crazy. 
So basically they say that Page Six reported that the rapper purchased new beats and plans to record music upon his release. It looks like he will be making music right away when he comes home. And this is what an anonymous music industry source told the outlet. He already contacted a young NYC producer and someone purchased two beats for him. So it's looking like he about to come back Put these records out. You know the kids is going to be rocking out to this stuff, honey. Because they, honestly, they like the music. They don't really care that, um, you know, this other stuff happened. I mean, I don't, I don't blame him for not, you know. Okay, I do, okay, this is what I blame him for. I do blame him for getting caught up with the likes of this sort of activity because, you don't need that to make music, especially now, not today. Like, that will get you more so in trouble in this type of situation than anything. I definitely feel like he's talented. I definitely think he still has an audience and people that will listen to him despite, you know, these um, older OG people not giving him the cosign. He didn't really have a cosign anyway coming into the game, so he doesn't need one now. So, I think, honey, we're we going to be hearing from uh, Takashi... For some time now, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to stay out of trouble, but it's definitely interesting to watch. It's King Brittany Chanel. You already know. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and my commentary on this. Definitely make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I, see, I will see y'all, excuse me, on the next video. Come shop with me now at my Teespring store, King Brittany Chanel Couture. I provide custom apparel and so much more for an affordable price. We have items like leggings, t-shirts, and hoodies. So thank you for shopping and I hope that you enjoy. Hey honeys, thank you for watching my video and if you haven't, definitely make sure you check out my Teespring King Brittany Chanel Couture where you can find my latest merch. I upload a lot of new designs frequently so definitely make sure you check it out. We have mugs, we have wall tapestries, canvas art, pillows fleece blankets, apparel, and so much more. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all on my next video.